So, we are no longer under effective hostile fire and have reached fire superiority. Now we can start caring for the casualty. This is known as tactical field care. At this point, we will be calling for a medevac, ASAP. We know things are going bad, so we start bringing in the bird. Next, we will start with a redistribution of resources, if we haven't done that already in the care under fire. And if our guy is carrying mission-sensitive items, we need those in safe hands. And also, in the event that we're giving our guy any painkillers and he's high as a kite, we really don't want him holding on to his weapon and grenades. Also, we need his ammo for our security detail. Remember, this can change at any given moment, so we're not out of the woods yet. So be careful before you start taking care of your casualties. Make sure the place is secure and maintain a 360 degree safety perimeter. And as needed, do triage of the casualties. Oh yeah, if you find a casualty with polytrauma, in English, our guy is really fucked up, without a pulse, no respirations, and other vital signs, we don't resuscitate, no CPR. Tactical field phase. Now let's jump right in into our assessment. We got our security set. I like to teach my guys the simple acronym MARCH, which stands for Massive Bleeding, Airway Management, Respirations, Circulation, Head Injury, Hypovolemia, and Hypothermia. And now let's start with Massive Bleeding. Basically, Massive Bleeding is everything you see that's really bad, that's bleeding, you need to cover it. No small boo-boos. Uh, but first of all, if our guy put the tourniquet on in the care under fire phase, we double check it. If it's on correctly, if it's on high and tight, okay, everything seems to be in order. If the tourniquet is not uh, holding, you put one next to it, side by side, cinch it in, and leave both uh, in place. Okay, he did a good job, I'm a good medic. Now, check the neck. Check the axe pockets, check the groin. If you see any blood, you cut the uniform, you expose the bleed. If it's bad, you pack it in with a combat gas or any other hemostatic agent. Okay, you do a visual sweep of his body. No bleeds, okay, good. You always talk with your guy. Hey buddy, are you okay? Okay, say, I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. What does that okay mean to us? That means that his airway is open. It's patent. We don't need to waste time checking it. If he's making any sense in his words, like he's like, God damn son of a bitch or something like that, PC correct. That means that he's making sense. He's getting some blood into his brain. He's getting oxygen. That means he's not in shock at this moment. If he's doing like, I'm, on, I'm, I'm gonna become an officer. Okay, he's apparently losing it. He's not getting enough oxygen in his brain. He's probably going into shock. If we haven't done that already, we take away his weapon, radio, grenades, so he doesn't do any damage. We take away his magazines, give it to the security detail because they need it. And that pretty much sums up the massive bleeding portion of our March protocol. Now we're going into A, airway management. If the patient is not talking with us, we need to open his airway, we need to clean it, maybe he has some snooze in it. We need to listen, hear for breathing. We can multitask and see the rise and fall of the chest. Okay, he's breathing with us. Okay, that's wonderful. If he's unconscious, we need to secure the airway. We can do that in uh, multiple different ways. We're gonna do it with an MPA, nasal pharyngeal airway, which is basically a nose uh, tube. Yes, it's funny, a tube in his body. We're gonna take it out of his IFAC. We take an MPA. We take our trusty lubricant. I'm not gonna make fun of him why he has lubricant in his IFAC. It can be used in many different ways. I hope it's being used only for the MPA. Bevel towards the septum.
Okay, we check. Okay, he's breathing, awesome. Don't forget to tape it down. What we do if we don't have an MPA, we can put him in a recovery position. This is the least that we can do. The rule of thumb, if he's awake and can't breathe and we're forcing him to stay on his back and he doesn't want it, don't force him. Maybe he has facial trauma and the blood is pooling into his airway. Lean him on his side. Okay, anything that helps him breathe. If he wants to stand up and the tactical situation permits it, he can stand up. Whatever helps him breathe. Okay, are you okay? Are you comfortable? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay, that pretty much sums up the A portion from the March algorithm. Now we go into respiration. Now we're going into the R portion of our March algorithm, respiration. Basically, that means we're gonna check if we have any holes in the box. By the box, I mean from the nose to the belly button. If there's any holes, we put an occlusive dressing on. But first of all, we expose the chest. We check the neck. We check the armpits. We look for breathing, bilateral rise and fall of the chest. If we are too stressed out to hear or see breathing, we take our hands, we say no homo, and we feel for breathing. Okay, good bilateral rise and fall. Nice. Now we pray a bit. We go up. If we see any discoloration on the collarbone, probably is broken. We're not gonna do any good if we find out, yes, exactly, it's broken. We just treat it and it's broken. No, it's okay. We just walk. Okay, nice. We go on one side of the rib cage. We just do a, just a bit of squeeze. We check if he's doing like a grimace. If he's doing like, ah, we stop. Nice. If we did find a hole was here, use your hand, put it on, get an occlusive dressing, open it up. Usually I pre-pack my occlusive dressing with an NCD. Oh, I have troubles opening. What do you do? Don't be afraid to let it go. You're gonna be faster taking out an inclusive dressing. Wipe it off and put it on, then like uh, this number or something there. Or get a porter. Put your hand here. Anybody can do it. Okay, we put this on. What do you do? You check, no suck, no blows. Okay, knee patch the hole. Now we're just gonna go for the rule of thumb again. If our patient is experiencing trouble breathing and uh, he has a hole in his chest that we put an occlusive dressing on, we put two and two together, he has a tension pneumothorax. We have to do a NCD, but that in a later video. All bad things come in too, so we have an entry hole, probably there's an exit hole. So we have to check the back. We do a Buddy hug. Check it, okay. Okay, we don't see anything. Good. If we see blood, we know it, but we're gonna check it later when we're checking his back. Now we're going to see circulation from our March protocol. First of all, we check our interventions or if they are still holding. Okay, everything seems to be in order. If we did any neck wounds, X pocket wounds, inguinal wounds, we double check it. Yeah, it's good. And if our hands are bloody, we wipe them off and we do the blood sweeps. If we see any blood, we take our scissors, 
we expose the wound and then decide what we're gonna do with him. If it's a minor venous blood, small cut, don't worry about it for now, just go forward. I think. Oh. Just a tip. Here I will probably see blood, expose it. It's just a minor cut. So now what we're gonna do, it's a minor cut, he has a tourniquet on. So the tourniquet is pretty much useless. So now we decide what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a compression bandage. We're gonna convert it. We don't know. That we're gonna cover in the next video. We finished our blood sweeps. Now we check his pulse. Okay, if we feel the radial, awesome. He's not in shock. If you don't feel the radial, check the carotid. He's alive. If you don't feel the radial pulse, that means he's in decompensated shock. He's not doing good. He's pretty much fucked up. Okay. Feel the skin, the color. Okay. Pink, warm and dry, awesome. Now what we're gonna do, we have to turn it over to check his back. But first of all, what we're gonna check, if he has a broken phallus, we close the book and then we open it. If we see a grimace on his face at any time, we stop immediately. That tells us that he has a broken pelvis and we have to move him in another way, but that in another video. Now we check this, we need to prep our equipment. We're gonna turn you over, so pretty much what we need. Our litter for hypothermia, our ready heat. Before we saw an entry wound in his uh, chest, we prep our second halo. We prepped our equipment, but what happened beforehand? I broke my glove and because I know my buddy's sexual preference of women and small farm animals, I'm gonna put a fresh glove on. Okay, now we're gonna turn him on the side. We check for his downside wound. Okay, nothing noted. Check his neck. No step-offs or deviations. Down. Okay. We prep our ready heat between his legs. So we do the hypothermia portion. Okay, one, two, three. Put him back in. Now we ask him, hey buddy, how are you? You good? Good. Okay. We're assessing his level of consciousness. Then check his airway. Yeah, he's still bleeding. I see rise and fall of the chest. He still has a radial pulse. Nice. LOC, ABC is done. Now interventions. We moved him. That's like an evasive thing that we did with his body. And before that, we did a couple of interventions on. Now we have to check them if they're still holding. Check the MPA. Okay, it's in, it was taped in. Okay, good breathing. Check his halo. No suck, no blow, nice. Check his tourniquet, yeah, still holding. Now let's do a bit of paperwork. Where's his TCCC card? Time for the cat. Note it on and note it on the TCCC card. And this, you put somewhere on him that he's not gonna lose. On his hand, on his belt. Okay, the TCCC card goes with him. We note all interventions that we did on it. So the flight medic and the surgeon in the hospital has an easier job. Now that we put our guy on the litter, we checked his 
level of consciousness, ABCs and interventions. Now we go into H, which stands for hypovolemia, head injury and hypothermia. For hypothermia, we already prepped our ready heat. Also have pre-staged blanket. And we cover him up the best we can. If not, we improvise. We do something. We take our hat, we put it on him. If he has any wet clothes, we change them. Nothing works well if our casualty is cold. A bit of hypothermia is done. Check the head for head injuries. If it's something minor, we just bandage it up. But if you see blown out pupils, raccoon eyes, which basically means discoloration under his eyes. If you see something leaking out of his ears, something out of his nose, that's an indication that he might have traumatic brain injury. We pretty much can do a lot of things for him. Uh, if he is not in shock, we can raise his shoulders and head for about 30 degrees, keep him breathing, and that's in our toolbox of help that we can give him. Okay, now what? You're not a medic and you need to cover hypovolemia. We suspect that he's going into shock and we need to fight it. We need to give him an IV or an IO. But do we have the capability? Do we have the knowledge, the skill? But that in another video. We pack the patient up, but we can still help. We give him his combat pill pack if he can swallow it. Can you swallow? Yeah, okay. He can swallow, luckily. That's nice. Beforehand, in the March protocol, we were saving a life but now we're just making it a bit better. With the combat pill pack, we're taking care of the antibiotic portion and a minor part of analgesia. Now we're just dressing the burns, the small cuts, maybe doing a tourniquet conversion, uh, immobilizing anything that needs to be mobilized. But if you don't know how to do this or anything more other than march, remember, probably we have comms up, so we call our tactical command or next level of care so they can help us, guide us through all the procedures that we still can do to our patient. Okay, now we're waiting for the medevac. We fill out his TCCC card. We prep our guy for transport, so our blanket doesn't go flying off in the rotor. We put his glasses on, and that's pretty much it. Last thing, enemy combatant. Sometimes we didn't do a good job and now we had to treat our wounded enemy. Oh. Because the rules of engagement dictate it and because it's the right thing to do. But safety first, immobilize and secure the enemy because he's still trying to kill us. Remember to watch part three where we cover a couple of basic interventions. <laughs>